Good evening, you're watching Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tina Jha with news tonight. Before we go over to the headlines, Rajya Sabha TV appeals to all its viewers to stay safe from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Wear face masks, wash hands and face regularly, and maintain physical distancing while stepping outside. Remember, the simple precautions are all that it takes to defeat the pandemic. And now let's get you the top stories of the day. Vietnam, an important pillar in India's Act East policy, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Both countries signed seven agreements in various fields, including defense. World needs a broader discussion agenda for development. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lays stress on an open, democratic and transparent society for innovation. Proposes world-class Buddhist library in India. Government urges farmers to join talks on agricultural reform laws. Agriculture Ministry writes to 40 organizations reiterates commitment to dialogue and resolution on all issues. Parliamentary Standing Committee on Ministry of Home Affairs submits report on COVID-19 pandemic, praises nation's efforts in improving capacities, increasing isolation beds, ICU beds and PPE kits. And virulent mutant COVID-19 strain forces UK to impose strict lockdown. India bans flights from Britain from midnight of 22nd December to 31st December. India and Vietnam on Monday signed seven pacts in the fields of defence, energy and healthcare at a virtual summit between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Vietnamese counterpart, Nguyen Xuan Phu. Speaking at the summit, Prime Minister Modi called Vietnam an important pillar of India's Act East policy, describing Vietnam as an important partner in India's Indo-Pacific vision. The Prime Minister said, cooperation between the two countries can contribute to maintaining peace and stability in the region. Both countries released a joint vision document and a plan of action for bilateral engagement between 2021 to 2023. हमारे विचारों में समानता है और हम साथ मिलकर अपने साझा मूल्यों को आगे बढ़ा सकते हैं अगले साल हम दोनों संयुक्त राष्ट्र की सुरक्षा परिषद में एक साथ सदस्य होंगे और इसलिए वैश्विक मंच पर हमारे सहयोग का महत्व भी और भी बढ़ जाता है यह प्रसन्नता की बात है कि आज हम एक जॉइंट विजन डॉक्यूमेंट और 2021 से 2020 30 तक 23 तक के हमारे बायोलिट्रल एंगेजमेंट के लिए एक प्लान ऑफ एक्शन को जारी कर रहे हैं इस जॉइंट विजन फॉर पीस प्रॉस्पेरिटी एंड पीपल में विश्व को हमारे संबंधों की गहराई का एक मजबूत संदेश जाएगा दोनों देशों के बीच सात महत्वपूर्ण समझौते भी साइन हुए हैं इनमें रक्षा वैज्ञानिक रिसर्च परमाणु ऊर्जा पेट्रोकेमिकल्स रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी तथा कैंसर के इलाज जैसे विविध विषय शामिल हैं हम अपने विकास सहयोग और सांस्कृतिक संरक्षण के क्षेत्र में भी नई पहल ले रहे हैं ये सभी हमारे बढ़ते आपसी सहयोग के विस्तार और पोटेंशियल को दर्शाता है 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi also on Monday proposed a library in India dedicated to traditional Buddhist literature and scriptures, asserting that it will be a platform for research and dialogue. Addressing the 6th Indo-Japan Samvad Conference, the Prime Minister praised the forum for its work in promoting the ideas and ideals of Lord Buddha, especially among the youth. Prime Minister Modi also called for a human-centric approach to the issue of growth and development. He said discussions on global growth must include more sections and also have a broader agenda. Discussions on global growth cannot happen only between a few. The table must be bigger. The agenda must be broader. Growth patterns must follow a human-centric approach and be in harmony with our surroundings. We had a dialogues, but they were aimed at pulling others down. Now, let us rise together. Lord Buddha's teachings command the strength to turn the discourse from enmity to empowerment. His teachings makes us large-hearted. They tell us, learn from the past and work towards a better future. Emphasizing the need for Samvad, the Prime Minister said it should spread the spirit of positivity, unity and compassion across our planet. Samvad should be one that will spread the spirit of positivity, unity and compassion across our planet. That two at a time when we need it the most. Friends, this is the first samvad of a new decade. It is happening at a critical moment of human history. Our actions today will shape the discourse in the coming times. Friends, the essence of samvad remains togetherness. Let samvad bring out the best in us together. This is the time to draw upon our ancient values and prepare for the times to come. The Prime Minister also said this decade will belong to those societies that place a premium on learning and innovating together. He called innovation the cornerstone to human empowerment and true learning should promote innovation. That's what he stressed upon. This decade and beyond will belong to these societies that place a premium on learning and innovating together. It will be about nurturing bright young minds who will add value to the humanity in the times to come. Learning should be such that furthers innovation. After all, innovation is the cornerstone of human empowerment. Moving on, the department-related Parliamentary Standing Committee on Home Affairs presented its report on the management of the COVID-19 pandemic to Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Benkaya Naidu. The committee noted that testing capacity expanded significantly after the nationwide lockdown in March this year. It also appreciated that India demonstrated its ability to scale up responses as the situation evolved. Anand Sharma, chairman of the department-related parliamentary standing committee on home affairs, presented the report on the management of the COVID-19 pandemic to Rajya Sabha chairman M. Venkaya Naidu. The committee noted that India had only one testing laboratory in January 2020. By 1st April, it increased to 151, and till 10th December 2020, there were 2,229 testing labs across the country. The number of isolation beds increased from approximately 1,74,000 to over 15 lakh. 
ICU beds from 22,000 to 80,000. PPE kits that were 387,000 in mid-April 2020 increased to about 6 crore on the 10th of December. Testing capacity per day grew from 30,000 on the 1st of April to 10 lakh till 10 December. The resilience that India has shown and the remarkable response, particularly in ramping up the infrastructure by creating record number of isolation beds, which have gone up uh, almost 13 times from 1.74 lakhs to 15 lakhs. ICU beds have almost quadrupled in the country, which are oxygen supported. The laboratories we had, sir, only 151. Today we have more than 2,267. The testing in the country, which was 28,773 uh, till 31st of March, is now more than 1.6 crores. The committee appreciated the government's efforts to extend various relief measures to the vulnerable sections. However, it noted that in the absence of a comprehensive national database, it is difficult to extend relief measures to intended beneficiaries. The committee also praised the government's efforts in providing additional allocation of food grains for distribution under the PDS. The committee has recommended that the government should draw up a national plan and guidelines under the NDMA 2005 and Epidemic Diseases Act 1897. An effective functional institutional mechanism is needed for coordination between the centre, states and union territories for quick response to such crises in future. This would ensure efficacious implementation of all decisions to contain pandemics and equitable, timely distribution of relief at district and sub-divisional levels to the intended beneficiaries in urban and rural areas. The committee said there is a global recognition of Indian scientists who are engaged in producing vaccines. It also noted the respect for India's institutional potential and capacities that were built over decades and have made India the largest vaccine manufacturer in the world. Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. In fact, the chairman of the department-related parliamentary standing committee on home affairs uh, spoke to Rajya Sabha TV and said India has shown resilience during the COVID-19 pandemic. Listen in. And joining us is the chairman of department-related parliamentary standing committee on home affairs, Mr. Anand Sharma. Mr. Sharma, welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You've presented very important reports to the chairman today. Take us through the key observations of the committee. Well, we have examined the impact of the pandemic, the social and economic fallout. The social and economic fallout has been very severe, in particular on the weaker sections, poor, on the daily wage earners, daily income earners, the migrant workers, they have been, uh, they were affected uh, before mitigating measures were taken. And what we have observed that there is need for a national <coughs> database of, for the migrant labor and these such poor people, including the urban poor, as the relief has to reach them. The, if the government has announced something, it can only reach them once their location, geographic location is there. But what we've also observed that <coughs> the, many of the laws need to be revisited whether it's the Migrant Workers Act, the NDMA Act of 2005, which had to be invoked for the management of the pandemic and the lockdown and the phased unlocking of the economy. And in addition to that, the Epidemic Act of 1897. Uh, this has been an extraordinary crisis, something which has not been seen. But our country was not thrown off balance. India has stood up as one nation, and uh, whether it's the center, central government, the state governments, and the district administrations, they all have responded. Uh, there are many lessons learned, so the report has in fact the conclusions, which talks only of the lessons learned and the recommendations. According to Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan, India may begin vaccinating people against COVID-19 in January next year. He added that the government does not want to compromise on the safety of the vaccine and that its first priority is safety and effectiveness of vaccines. Let's listen in. January के महीने में भी कभी किसी भी stage पे किसी भी सप्ताह में ऐसा समय आ सकता है जब हम भारत के लोगों को 
पहला जो वैक्सीन का शॉट है वो देने की स्थिति में आ जाए दुनिया में किसी से भी पहली बात तो यह है कि भारत वैक्सीन के डेवलपमेंट की दृष्टि से वैक्सीन के रिसर्च के मामले में किसी से भी कम नहीं है और किसी से भी पीछे नहीं है वैक्सीन इफेक्टिव भी होनी चाहिए सेफ भी होनी चाहिए और इम्यूनोजेनिक उसका रिस्पॉन्स भी ठीक होना चाहिए इसमें भारत किसी भी किस्म का कोई कॉम्प्रोमाइज नहीं करने वाला है India on Monday banned flights from the United Kingdom after the detection of a new and highly infectious strain of the coronavirus in Britain. The suspension of flights will come into effect from midnight of 22nd December and will continue till the 31st of December. As a precautionary measure, passengers arriving from the UK in all transit flights which are reaching India before the 22nd of December should be subject to mandatory RT-PCR tests on arrival at the airports. there are statements made by senior political leaders including the british health secretary that this new virus strain which there has been reported is spreading uh, at a alarming rate therefore we have decided starting from 2359 hours tuesday 22nd december all flights to and from the united kingdom will be temporarily suspended till 31st december of this year between now and then those who are in the pipeline will be subjected to a 100% mandatory rt pcr test those who test positive will have to be undergoing 7 days institutional quarantine even those who are negative who don't have any symptoms will be subjected to medical monitoring india's decision to ban flights comes after several european union nations which include france germany the netherlands belgium austria and also italy announced restrictions on UK travel this after british prime minister boris johnson announced that christmas shopping and gatherings in southern england must be cancelled because of rapidly spreading infections blamed on the new coronavirus variant beyond europe israel also said it was banning flights from britain denmark and south africa because those were the countries where the mutation has been found Britain on Sunday imposed new lockdown restrictions in parts of the country after a rapidly moving new variant of the novel coronavirus 70% more transmissible than existing strains appear to be spreading in London and South England in recent weeks The new strain is named VUI 202012/01 the first variant under investigation in December 2020 and is defined by a set of 17 mutations First detected in September, around a quarter of cases in London were reported from the new variant in November. This reached nearly two thirds of the cases in mid December. Although this new strain is being detected in a wide geography and is still being studied, there is no evidence to suggest that mutation is more severe. But the increase in rate of transmission means more people could get infected than before, needing hospital treatment. According to the World Health Organization. Australia, Denmark and the Netherlands have identified cases of the variant in their countries. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And let's now take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers in India. 24,337 new coronavirus cases were reported in the last 24 hours from across the country, taking the total number of cases to over 1 crore 55,000. With 333 new deaths reported in the same period, The total death toll now stands at 1,45,810. With 25,709 new recoveries reported in the last 24 hours, India continues to report more daily recoveries than the daily new cases. India's total active case load has dropped to 3.03 lakh, which is the lowest in 161 days. Over 96 lakh patients have recovered so far. The national recovery rate has further improved to 95.53%. The total number of tests in the country have crossed 16.20 crore with 9 lakh tests conducted in the last 24 hours. Kerala reported the highest daily new cases at 5711 followed by Maharashtra with 3811 new cases of COVID-19. West Bengal recorded 1978 new cases Maharashtra also saw the maximum casualties at 98 while West Bengal and Kerala reported 40 and 30 daily deaths respectively.
And time for a short break here. More news and updates will continue on the other side. Do stay with us. Watch The Big Picture at 9.30 p.m. Only on Rajya Sabha Television. Which of the following is not a responsibility of a Rajya Sabha member? Your options are A. Legislative To pass laws B. Oversight To hold the executive accountable C. Deliberative To debate and discuss and D. Judicial To adjudicate disputes See the correct answer tonight at 9.30pm Only on Rajya Sabha Television Welcome back. You're watching News Tonight. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be the chief guest at the virtual centenary celebrations of Aligarh Muslim University on Tuesday. Prime Minister Modi will release a special postal stamp to mark the occasion. Union Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank will also join the event via video conferencing. The government has asked farmers to choose a date for the next round of talks. In a letter to the various farmer unions, Joint Secretary in the Agriculture Ministry, Vivek Agarwal, urged them for a dialogue to resolve this issue. He said the centre is making all possible efforts to find an appropriate solution to resolve all the concerns raised by the farmers with an open mind. Vivek Agarwal said the government intends to convene the next meeting in New Delhi for resolving the issue. He also mentioned that the government held meetings with several other farmers' organizations and sought their suggestions as well on the matter. The sixth round of talks between farmers and the government was cancelled after the farmers' leaders rejected the government's draft proposal to amend certain provisions of the farm laws and thereafter they declined to participate in the meeting. The Uttarakhand government tabled a supplementary budget of 4,063.79 crore rupees in the state assembly on the first day of winter session on Monday. The supplementary budget has proposed the highest allocation of 2,293.30 crore for centrally assisted schemes, followed by 641 crore rupees for disaster management. Earlier, the House also made obituary references to its late MLAs. The winter session of the Chhattisgarh Assembly also began on Monday. The session will have seven sittings and will conclude on the 30th of December. Chief Minister Bhupesh Baghel will, rep, uh, will present the supplementary budget for fiscal year 2020-21 during this session. On the first day of the session, BJP MLAs demanded a compensation of 25 lakh rupees each to the kin of the farmers who had committed suicide. King George's Medical University of Lucknow held its 16th convocation on Monday. President Ramnath Kovind addressed the students and teachers of the medical university via video conference. Addressing the gathering, the president said, Public hospitals like the KGMU of Lucknow have played a leading role in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. He added, due to their efforts, millions of countrymen are able to face the challenges posed by the ongoing pandemic. The president also said that worldwide efforts are going on to harness the coordination of communication technology and individual talent of physicians in the 21st century health services. Sun 2020 covid लेकिन केंद्र और राज्य सरकारों द्वारा समय रहते उचित कदम उठाए जाने से इस महामारी पर यथा संभव नियंत्रण रखा जा सका है। Veteran Congress leader Motilal Vora passed away at a private hospital in New Delhi on Monday. He was 93 years old. Vora was detected with COVID-19 back in October, but he had recovered and got discharged from the hospital. 
Two days back, he was admitted to another hospital with a urinary infection. President Ramnath Kovind has expressed grief on the demise of Motilal Vora. In a Twitter message, the president said, he was humility personified and belonged to a generation of leaders who carried their politics with unflinching conviction till the end. Vice President M. Mekhe Naidu also condoled the passing away of former Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister and former Rajya Sabha member Motilal Vora. In a Twitter message, the Vice President said, Motilal Vora was an astute administrator. Expressing grief on the demise of Vora, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, he was among the senior most Congress leaders who had vast administrative and organizational experience in a political career that spanned decades. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi also condoled the demise of senior party leader and described him as a true congressman and a wonderful human being. Motilal Vora was elected to the Madhya Pradesh Assembly six times and served twice as chief minister of the state. He was member of Rajya Sabha four times and for, of the Lok Sabha for one term. He also served as governor of Uttar Pradesh and as union minister of health and family welfare and civil aviation. In a rare phenomenon, Jupiter and Saturn align closest to each other, resulting in a conjunction. This conjunction is easily visible in the evening sky and is popularly known as the Christmas star or the Bethlehem star. The two planets have not come this close since 400 years. Stargazers across the globe gathered at planetoriums to witness this rare phenomenon. And before we leave, we once again appeal to all our viewers to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic. Wear face masks, wash hands and face regularly and maintain physical distancing while stepping outside. Remember, these very simple precautions are all that it takes to defeat the ongoing pandemic. Good night and thank you very much for your time.